Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. Destiny changer, you are a destiny changer. Come and change your destiny, a destiny today. He that will frustrate your destiny has not been born, is not being born, and will never be born. You are going somewhere and you will certainly get there. Can I hear somebody a holla amen three times? Number one, number two, and number three. Welcome to Moment of Destiny. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Nathan D.D. Fika, President. Providence Delta Baptist Conference. We are happy to be with you. We are glad to be with you on this broadcast. And we believe that as you tune in, we believe that as you watch, we believe that as you listen, the word of the Lord will make a meaning in your life and will bring transformation unto you. So I welcome you on board and ask that the Lord bless you as you join us on this broadcast. Your life will never be the same again. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Aha! Providence Delta Baptist Conference of the Nigerian Baptist Convention specially invites you to a breakthrough and combined Easter service with the theme, Sacrifice for Divine Fulfillment. Psalms chapter 138 verse 8 and Romans chapter 5 verse 6. Date is Easter Sunday, 4th of April 2021. Time is 1 p.m. And the venue is Providence Arena, kilometer 14 East West Road, Obiamuge, Agbaru, Delta State, Nigeria. Guest preacher is Rev. Michael Iberiwe, Pastor, Eagles Life Baptist Church, Worry, and your host is Rev. Nathan D. D. Thicken, Ph.D., President, Providence Delta Baptist Conference. Ministry in songs are Kwesiri Sharikure, a.k.a. Abo Abo, Baptist Soul Winning Band, and Rev. Dr. Udoka Osaiga and the Providence Delta Baptist Conference Mass Choir. Come explore God's sacrifice for your fulfillment at the Providence Delta Baptist Conference Special Breakthrough and Combined Easter Service. The Providence Delta Baptist Conference, building the new generation people with dynamic spiritual impact. I is last year, I'm pregnant. So when I come to camp here, I say, God, the word the Hebrew women will deliver, let me deliver like Hebrew women. So when we go, where the stomach is pain, I told my husband, I'm feeling pain. When we went to the hospital, I stayed there long. So the doctor said, Operation, I say, God forbid. I will not burn the child with operation. I will deliver like Hebrew women. I told my husband, wait till the end. That one time in our church, when I bring it for me, I put it inside my forehead, I put it inside my pregnancy. And you put the powder inside my pregnancy, I deliver like Hebrew women. Look at this, I praise Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ishakiri wado. Take it to you, Mania. If you fear for men, take it to you, man. If you fear for men, go to me, your day. If you fear for men, and we said it here that say, if you fear for men, or what you possess.
from the domain of virus, from the domain of virus, how we stand, can you stand with me? From the to the most critical aspect of the annual session, this closing moment, and it has always been the climax every year, and God is bringing us to that climax again today. Can I hear you shout it out again? Yeah. You will not go the same way you came in the name of Jesus. The miracles you sought, the God of miracles will grant you here and now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will leave this place with your testimony in your hands. I really hear you shout it out, Amen. Our text, Psalm 138, verse 8, please. Psalm 138, verse 8. Psalm 138, verse 8. And then we'll read from Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. Psalm 138, verse 8. Put your hand here and lift your Bible above your head and say with me, This is my Bible. I can't hear you loud enough say it again. This is my Bible. It is a powerful and living word of God. As I read from me today, my life is blessed, my life is revitalized. I will be lifted from where I am to where I ought to be. I will never be the same again. Never ever the same again. Let somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Psalm 138, verse 8 says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Can we say it together? Everybody wants to go. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the words of your hands. Now let's go to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledge to the marriage to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to the Son, and you are to call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel? Since I am a virgin, the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the only one to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her holy age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever Fear. One version said, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Can I hear you say that? For with God nothing shall be impossible. Say it again. For with God nothing shall be impossible. One more time. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And verse 38. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. One person said, Be it unto me according to your word. Then the angel left her. Father, breathe upon your word. Thank you for the mighty days you did before we came here on Thursday. Thank you for the mighty days you have done since we've been here. This is the eighth service, or even the ninth service on this ground, apart from the organizational meetings. And you have visited us. Testimonies have come forth that we have had that we be right here on this ground. And they have been here testifying to what you have done since we came here. Thank you for what you did before. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you will yet do. Lord, let no one go back with any problem they came with tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Grant solution to everyone. Heal everyone, Lord. Restore everyone. Deliver everyone. 
We will leave you rejoicing to the glory and honor of your name. Thank you for all your gifts to bless us through the week. Glory and honor and power and majesty be unto your holy name. In Jesus Christ, mighty name we pray, and everybody shout, Amen. Amen. You may be seated, please. God bless you. As we close in this annual session, I want to speak on the subject, the spirit of fulfillment. Can you say that with me? The spirit of fulfillment. The spirit of fulfillment. Say it to me again, somebody. The spirit of fulfillment. You will notice there have been a sequence, there have been a pattern in our annual sessions. At the opening service, I will usually speak about the God of the King. Like this year, we are talking about fulfillment. So, we we'll open the session with the God of fulfillment. To begin with Him. Without Him, we have no fulfillment. And we close on the subject of the anointing. Speaking now about the spirit of fulfillment. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of fulfillment. God's agenda for everyone is that we will find the fulfillment. Our destinies will have expression. His purpose for our lives will be fulfilled. And for God's purposes to be fulfilled, the spirit of God will always be at work to bring to pass that which God has purpose to do. That was what we saw in our text in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. It was the Holy Spirit that came to speak to Mary, to bring to fulfillment what God had ordained. The purpose of God for her, the purpose of God for humanity, was to be given birth to. And so the Spirit of the Lord came into the picture. You will remember that even in creation, in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord was opening over the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. If you look at that sequence, out of the voidness, immediately God speaks, the Holy Spirit executed. So we need the Holy Spirit for anything that will happen in our lives. We need the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He functions in our lives, then we will have fulfillment. He goes on behalf of us, then we will have fulfillment. I want to share a few things with you tonight. And the first thing is the spirit of fulfillment. He is the spirit of purpose. He is the spirit of what? Of purpose. God had a purpose for Mary. God had a purpose for humanity. God had a purpose for Israel. And so, he sent the angel. And the angel was specific to say, this will happen by the Holy Spirit. This purpose can only come to pass by the Holy Spirit. And the psalmist in Psalm 138, verse he said, the Lord will fulfill his purpose. It is the Lord that will fulfill it, not man. The Lord will fulfill his purpose. There is intention of God for every one of us. There is intention of God for every nation of the world. God has an objective for us. God has a aim for us. God has his predetermined purpose for us. God has his predetermined will for us. And he wants to bring it to pass. And it is the Spirit of God that brings it to pass. As we are all living here, let me tell you, whenever I go to revival, I tell them, the revival will be ended. The revival services will be ended, but the revival will not end in our lives. The annual session is ending the moment from now, but the impact of this annual session will not end in our lives in the name of Jesus. The spirit of fulfillment will go with you to execute the purpose of God in your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear you shout it louder than you can Number two, it is the spirit of God's presence, of the divine presence. If you look at that text, chapter 1, verse 26, all the way to verse 28, it's the angel of the Lord, Gabriel, came to Nazareth. He came to a town. And in that town, he located a virgin. And the name of that virgin is Mary. So there was a specific presence that came to a town. A specific presence that came to Galilee. A specific presence that came to Nazareth. 
a specific presence that came to the virgin, a specific presence that came to a woman called Mary. And if you look at verse 28 of that text, the angel went to her and said, It is you who are my favor. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you, is with me. The presence of God is with you. The presence of God is with you. The Lord is with you. The angel came by the Spirit of God and spoke to the virgin. The Lord is with you. Can I tell you tonight? The Lord is with you. And the Lord will continue to be with you. So shout the Lord and amen. I said the Lord will be with you. And the Lord will continue to be with you. As you go from here, by the Spirit of the Lord, the presence of God will never depart from you. It's a mighty presence we all will see with you. He told Joshua, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He told the disciples, Lord, I will be with you even to the end of the age. Number three, the spirit of fulfillment. He is the spirit of prophecy. He is the spirit of prophecy. He is the spirit of prophecy. What did the angel say to Mary? In verse 28 of our text, the angel began to prophesy to Mary. He said his mentor, I said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. You who are highly favored. He declared the favor of God upon her. And he said, highly, not just favor, you are highly favored. He declared, prophesied, the Lord is with you. When you get to verse 30 to 33, he says, But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. The angel prophesied. In verse 31, he says, You will conceive and give birth to the Son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. These are words of prophecy. He will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. When this word of prophecy came to her, the woman was curious, and she began to ask, How will this be? But the angel did not even stop there. If you go to the Sanitarius, the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the only one to be born will be called the Son of God. The word from God came to the woman so that there will be expression of the will of God in our lives, actualization of the will of God in our life. The word of God came, the decree from heaven came, the, the voice of the Lord came through that angel, and that is what gave life to that which God has programmed to come to pass. The word of prophecy is a life. You remember in Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel got to the valley of dry bones. The Lord asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, Lord, you will not know. And God said to Ezekiel, prophesy. Tap your neighbor and say, prophesy. He said, come on man, prophesy to this dry bones. And as he prophesied, that which was dead came alive. That which didn't find fulfillment now had fulfillment. I prophesy, fulfillment is coming to you today. Fulfillment is coming to you today. Prophecy also means the release of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The release of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Judah in Judah chapter 2, verse 28 down to 31. It talks about sons and daughters. You are saying your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. It both men and women, young and old. They will declare the counsel of the Lord. And then he said they will also dream dreams and they will have vision. Listen, they are talking about spiritual revelation. The gift of revelation. Wherever the spirit of fulfillment is at work, they will have prophecy and the prophetic at work. As you go, you are going under the shadow of the prophetic. I said you are going under the shadow of the prophetic. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, he is a spirit of power. Somebody shout power. power. Let me hear you laugh. Somebody shout power. power. The spirit of fulfillment is a spirit of power. Wherever the spirit of fulfillment is at work, there is power. Divine power. Divine 
divine enabling, divine strength, divine ability, divine force, divine utterance, divine might. It comes. Divine empowerment comes by the spirit of fulfillment. You see, in that scripture, the angel told Mary, he said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And when the power of the Most High overshadows you, the Holy One will be born. When the power of the Most High overshadows you, the, most, the Holy One will be born. When the power of the Most High overshadows you, the Holy One will be born. You are going from here, you will be delivered by the Holy Spirit. I said you will deliver in destiny by the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Aha! Providence Delta Baptist Conference of the Nigerian Baptist Convention specially invites you to a breakthrough and combined Easter service with the theme Sacrifice for Divine Fulfillment. Psalms chapter 138, verse 8, and Romans chapter 5, verse 6. Date is Easter Sunday, 4th of April 2021. Time is 1 p.m. and the venue is Providence Arena, kilometer 14, East West Road, Obiamuge, Agbaru. Delta State, Nigeria. Guest preacher is Rev. Michael Iberiwe, Pastor, Eagles Life Baptist Church, Wari, and your host is Rev. Nathan D. D. Thicken, Ph.D., President, Providence Delta Baptist Conference. Ministry and songs are Kwesiri Sharikure, a.k.a. Abo Abo, Baptist Soul Winning Band, and Rev. Dr. Udoka Osaiga and the Providence Delta Baptist Conference Mass Choir. Come explore God's sacrifice for your fulfillment at the Providence Delta Baptist Conference Special Breakthrough and Combined Easter Service. The Providence Delta Baptist Conference, building the new generation people with dynamic spiritual impact. Welcome back. This is still Moment of Destiny. I'm sure that God blessed you. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, can I encourage you to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you are not saved, you are not safe. If you don't have Christ, you are in crisis. A life without Christ is a life in crisis. I want to encourage you to turn over your life to Jesus, to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Have you done that before? Then you need to rededicate your life to him, to consecrate yourself to him. Maybe you backslidden after you gave your life to Christ. Please come back to him. His arms are still open to receive you. And you will have newness of life, a new work with him as you will dedicate your life to him. I don't know what challenge you have, but by this ministration and prayer, your challenges are also taken care of. The miracle working God will grant you your miracles. Your life will never be the same again. Can I encourage you to join us in any of our Baptist churches, wherever you are, anywhere in the world, and particularly in Delta State, in the Providence Delta Baptist Conference. Get there that you listen to us, you watch to us, and the message blessed you. Introduce yourself to the pastor or any official of the church. You will be warmly welcomed and embraced with the hands of the Lord. It is well with you. As I leave you, don't you ever forget this. He that will frustrate your destiny has not been born. It's not been born and will never be born. You are going somewhere and you will certainly get there in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen.